to my channel. My name is Trisha and we are going to be talking about ball pythons today and six items that you should absolutely never buy for them. And then I'm going to explain why and offer some ulterior products that you could use that would be much better for your ball pythons. Um, so yeah, I hope that this will be helpful if you are interested in ball pythons and trying to figure out the stuff that you're going to need for them or maybe you have one but you're not sure if you're taking care of them properly. Hopefully this will help. So the first product that I absolutely don't want anyone buying for ball pythons is a 40 gallon tank for adults. So if you have a baby ball python and you do want to upgrade over time and you want to start out with a glass tank, it's okay. I don't recommend it because glass tanks can typically make the snake feel very exposed and stressed out and it can lead to a ball python that's not going to be eating well. So ball pythons are picky already as it is, so you don't want to be making it any more difficult than it has to be. So I think it's best to just upgrade and get a full length 4x2 PVC enclosure for ball pythons right off the bat because if you give them a really large enclosure like that, it has closure on the sides if it's made of PVC instead of glass. That way the snake can't just see everywhere and feel completely exposed. It will reduce those stress levels. And then of course, if you fill out the enclosure, offer a lot of hides and security for the snake, it can also feel comfortable in that large enclosure as well. And then they can just grow into it rather than having to upgrade over and over again over time and possibly cause your snake more stress. So PVC enclosures are really good for keeping humidity in and of course reducing stress because of the no glass sides. And then they are also really good for the use of heat pads. So definitely recommend using a PVC enclosure if you can. One of my favorite brands is the Zen Habitats, which are what all of my enclosures are. The PVC ones for ball pythons that they offer are the 4x2x16, the 4x2x2, and they also have a 4x2x4 if you want to offer your ball python a ton of climbing height as well. There's a lot of different options there. Uh, but yeah, lots of great options for ball pythons and don't be afraid to upgrade early on because they will grow into it. You just got to make sure you fill it out and make them feel secure. Number two is reptile carpet. I don't see this too often, but every now and then I will see it. And you do not want this for any reptile, honestly. Um, and for ball pythons, just don't do it. It is really gross because one time that your snake poops on it, it's going to latch on to that bacteria and the carpet is not easy to clean. And even if you do clean it, there's still gonna be stuff on there that you don't want. Um, it's just not ideal. Just don't do it. Um, the best thing to do is go with a substrate that can hold in humidity. I see a lot of people using Aspen for them as well. I typically don't recommend that because you cannot moisten that up. If you spray Aspen, it will just get moldy and disgusting and become a bacteria ridden enclosure that is not healthy for your animal. So the best thing to do is go with some type of um, substrate that has a cocoa husk to it. You can also mix in like Repti bark. Um, you can put leaf litter in there, moss, all of those good things. Anything that can hold and retain moisture for your ball python, especially during shedding because they will need that spike in humidity every time they're gonna be going into shed in order to get all of it off properly. Number three is kind of similar to the reptile carpet and it is fake plants that are made of fabric. So it is the same exact concept of the reptile carpet where if it gets wet and dirty and there's poop on it, whatever the case is, it's going, the fabric will just latch onto that until the end of time. It will be disgusting forever. It's not easy to clean. So if you do want to use fake plants, please go and use something that's made of plastic, which is far easier to clean and will not latch onto all that disgusting bacteria. Um, and then another option would be to just use live plants. Like if you're going to use live plants, just make sure that there aren't any pesticides or chemicals on it. If you get it from a place like Home Depot or Lowe's or you're not sure, just rinse it off really, really well and also root the plant so that way those little fertilizers, those little like white pebbles aren't in the soil as well because that can also be toxic to animals. Um, but lots of great options. Live plants will offer more humidity for a ball python, whereas the plastic plants won't really increase humidity, but either way plants will 
make your snake feel more secure because you're going to be using it as foliage to fill out that enclosure and they can use it to hide in so it makes them feel safe. So plants are very necessary. Just don't use the fabric plants because they will get gross over time and it's not going to be a healthy environment for your snake. Number four is really small water bowls. I feel like I've never covered this before and I've never really heard of anyone else mentioning this. I have seen it a time or two. And the thing is, if you have um, a large ball python and then a really tiny little water dish for them to drink out of, it can work for hydration. However, um, a lot of ball pythons or snakes in general like to soak in the water, especially before shed. It really helps them to get their shed off. So if your snake isn't able to fully submerge in the water bowl, I feel like they're missing out. It's a component that should be in every ball python or snake enclosure in my opinion because it really does help them with shed and it also can be a form of enrichment if they want to go in there and soak whatever, let them do it. It's better to have the option rather to not have the option. So just don't put like, you also don't want a like water bowl that's like overly large and you're worried that your snake could potentially drown in it. I've never seen an instance like that but I figured I would mention it just in case but I have seen some water bowls that just look way too small and it's not big enough for the snake to be able to soak in so soaking is very important for them and you want to make sure that you can add that to the setup as well number five is the dreaded heat rock don't see this happen too often but people do still bring it up and they still use them and they're still sold unfortunately these things are not regulated and they are not safe and they are known to not only kill reptiles but really really cause damage and burns so you obviously don't want to hurt your animal and give them a product like this that could hurt them so just stay away from heat rocks entirely because i don't know why they are still sold it is very frustrating and number six are red lights or night lights. So I see this a lot with ball pythons and a ton of other reptiles. Um, people like to use red lights at nighttime because they're worried that their animal will get too cold at nighttime and they wanna make sure that they still have some warmth in the setup. So this can be problematic because the red lights are known for being a little bit dangerous and that they can cause um, eye damage to a lot of reptiles. So obviously you don't want to do that, so don't use that. I do see other lights like purple or blue lights being used at nighttime as well. I am not sure, like I don't know if there's been science put into this to discover if they can cause eye damage as well. I recommend staying away from all color bulbs. I just don't think it's worth the risk. Um, and the other thing is you shouldn't be using lights at all for snakes at nighttime. They are nocturnal and they do need that day night cycle. So it should be completely dark at nighttime. They will be comfortable. That is what they're used to and that is what they prefer. So that's how it should be done at nighttime. If you are worried that the temperature is dropping to a really low temperature that is not safe for your ball python, like if it's below the 60s at nighttime, then you can, there's a couple different things you can do. One, you can use a heat pad and you can have the heat pad as an option on the warm side all day and night. That's what I do for mine. And then the other option would be to just simply add a space heater to your reptile room, which I also have to add that to my reptile room because these windows in here are very old and drafty. So in the winter months, it is absolutely needed but a space heater will just increase the ambient temperature of the entire room and all of your setups that are needed to make sure that it stays a nice comfortable room temperature. So those are my tips for that. If you guys can come up with any other products that you see people using for ball pythons that you just absolutely hate, please go ahead and leave it in my comment section. I have a feeling you guys are going to be mentioning racks because that is a huge debate. I myself don't like racking systems. Um, I think that if you're keeping them as pets, you should just give them a ton of space and enrichment. Um, but then I do see people that are breeding them and obviously they don't have the space to give every individual snake a four by two enclosure. So when I look at it like that, I'm thinking, okay, well, at least the goal is that those snakes will end up in other homes with all of that space down the line, I hope. 
So those are my thoughts on that. But please go ahead, let me know what you think. What other products do you absolutely hate for ball pythons? Please go ahead and leave it in my comment section. I hope that you guys find this video helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.